Yo, what's up? It's your boy Il Barber, and today we're at the Dapper Men's Den Barbershop in Bernardsville, New Jersey. And we're gonna find out how one female barber is gonna take over this town with 40 to 60 dollar haircuts. What's the struggle about like being a female barber? Like, okay, at you know, at that barbershop, some guys would look at me and they would be like, you come in, sign your name on a board, and like kind of either you can pick your barber, just like who whoever's like first come, first serve. So a lot of guys would be like, okay, you know, like, whoever's up, whoever can get me first. And they'd see me and be like, oh shit, like a girl's gonna cut my hair? And I can see her all over the face and be like, wow, like you never had a girl cut your hair before, have you? Yeah. They're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay, like, have a seat. So, and I'm, after the haircut, I'd be like, so how do you like your cut? You're like, damn, you proved me wrong. <laughs> you know? I'm like, that's right. I'm like, I did prove you wrong. I'm like, I am a girl and I can cut hair. Just because, you know, I'm a girl doesn't mean I can't fade like a guy can. A lot of niggas ain't scared. Y'all ready for this? It's officially mine. The Dapperman's Den Barber and Shave Parlor. Who's as excited as I am? Put a bar here, front desk over here, station there, two stations in there, little waiting area. Another two stations back in here. And there's the barber chairs all ready to go. And that's gonna be transformed into our back room. Yeah, oh yeah, even here, so um kind of building this this here out once i got this um i mean i saw it and it was beautiful i love all the different hardwoods were already here the flooring the um you kind of did a little tour of the place like all the hard like all the hardwood i guess years ago this was like a hardwood restoration place so they had all different kinds of hardwood in here and i thought like wow that's like masculine it has that masculinity to it um it's beautiful um so i kind of went with that um, the only problem is I'm on a slate, a concrete slate, so plumbing. Each sink, I don't know if you guys noticed, but each sink has, or each station, I'm sorry, has, a, um, has its own sink. Um, to run the plumbing, we couldn't go on the floor. There's a stairwell actually on this side of us, so we couldn't run the plumbing through the wall. So we're like, okay, well, how are we going to do this? So we talked to a plumber. He's like, we can run it you know, on the outside of the wall, but the pitch has got to be right. Like further out you go, the more money it is. I'm like, okay, I'm on a budget here. How much money is this going to be? Um, so there was that. And then of course now there's plumbing running alongside the wall. So we had to build, build out this here. I don't know if I'm still in the frame, but we had to build this wall here, um, which um, my brother actually helped me out a bunch with that because he has a construction company. But he also has a job and he's redoing his house and he's got a kid. So now it's like, okay, um, you told me it was going to be done by this date, but now it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it, you know, tomorrow. Oh, I can't do tomorrow. I got to do, you know, an estimate on this project that I'm doing. You know, I'll do it next weekend. Well, next weekend comes and, oh, I can't do it this weekend. I'm like, I love you, but can we get this done? <laughs> so it's like, it, it took a while. And now I'm like under pressure to like get this, get this going. Time's ticking. I got to open. Um, you know, State Board of Cosmetology, they're, they need every T crossed and I dotted. And for me to get my, um, my State Board inspection, passed all my inspections, came in here, you know, did my plumbing inspection, passed, did my, you know, construction inspection, passed. 
Um, electrical, that was another I had to do electrical and you know every every station has outlets and we had to then put in um, its own panel box. So that was like another little like hurdle that we had to jump across. Now I'm waiting my, um, my washer and dryer. We had um, a vent, we needed a vent. Now we have to figure out how we're gonna get this vent because I'm in the middle of a, a building. So we have to like run it out. Now that's like the next hurdle that I'm crossing right now. I'm like, we need to get, figure out how do we do this vent on this dryer? Because I'm in the middle of a building. I got two stores that I got to go through and get this vent down an 18 inch wall. Like, <laughs> so we're tackling it. But little by little, we're getting there, you know? It's like every day we're getting that much closer. Then once I do get my CO, Certificate of Occupancy, I can send that to the State Board of Cosmetology and they take, you know, four to eight weeks. It's another month or two before they can book their appointment. So it's it's been a long journey, but I've learned a lot and I've, you know, taking the time and taking it positive, you know, like, okay, in those four to eight weeks, I can hire people, I can train those people and, you know, you make use of that time. There's still a little bit, I gotta hang curtains and obviously we're still under a little bit of construction. So there's things I can, you know, tidy up and do until we open. Yeah. Why, did you bring that um, metal pen in here? Yes, I did. And where you put the uh, spackle tent uh, thing? Okay, as far as like having kids, eventually, like one day when I go to have kids, like, okay, how am I going to go to work, make money? Because nowadays, like, you need two incomes to, to support a family, especially if you're like, like my fiance, he has a son already, and we want possibly two more. <laughs> so it's like to support a family of three, like, how, how? You know, you both people have to work. So I'm like, how am I going to do that? Making like 850 haircut. I got to, I got to find a place where I'm going to make more money and I want to, you know, cut my hours back and have, have kids. I want, you know, to be mom. So it's kind of that, like, how do you work and make money, but also have kids and raise a family and, and be a mom too. So, you know, I want to be like home cooking dinner and have dinner on the table and a whole happy little wife picking fence life. <laughs> um, so, but I kind of found the answer by, you know, opening my own barbershop. I'm like praying that one day I'll be able to step back at the role of, you know, being a barber on the floor and give my clients to now my employees and feed them, yeah. which, you know, if they're happy and they're making money, that means I'm making money too. So everybody's happy at that point. So. What kind of advice would I give a person opening? Be strong. It's it, like, it's been a rough ride. Not rough, happy and like, you know, ups and downs and I've definitely cried. <laughs> I have a good support system. My mom, my fiance, my brother, they're like, you know, when I'm like, okay, can I do this? They're like, you can do it. Like, let's go, you know? You have a good support system that's like, when you're down and you're like stressed, you're like, pick you up, dress you off and say, keep going, let's go. <laughs> you know, it's, you gotta keep pushing through. You're gonna come across humps and hurdles and now at this point it's like, okay, we got a hurdle with the dryer, the vent. Like, let's just do it. <laughs> at this point I'm like, whatever, let's just get this done. Let's keep moving. Just keep moving and do it. Take your time, I guess. It helps that, I mean, I'm not a millionaire by any means, <laughs> by any means. So taking my time over the course of the past year and doing it slowly, um, you know, I was able to, you know, have that where I can buy a little bit at a time instead of one big purchase all at once. I don't know how, if people have that much money, could bless you. Um, but if you don't have that much money and shot open, take it over a course where you can like little at a time buy it. Um, um, never had any dreams of opening a barbershop because I saw like, my father, my sister, and my aunt, like, just because you own a place doesn't mean you're making a lot of money, you know? Um, they had clients that they had for years, and because now that they're the owner, they stopped tipping them. Like, and they're wondering, like, why, why aren't they tipping us anymore? Like, what's, what's going on with that? 
and because you're the owner, you make 100%. Well, not really, because you got all of the overhead. You got rent, you got your water bill, your electric bill, you know, all the, everything you see in here that I purchased, there's a loan, <laughs> there's, you know, there's, there's bills, and the first person that's gonna be paying that bill isn't the person that's getting, you know, 50% or whatever percent they're getting, they're still getting their happy paycheck, you gotta pay them out, pay their insurance and all that kind of stuff. That's you paying that bill. That's money out of your pocket. You're not getting 100%. You're not getting anything. I'm not paying myself the first few years until I pay off all my debt first. So it's, it's a struggle, you know, but I think I can do it. Hey guys, it's Bree, the owner of the Dopperman's Den. I just want to thank Il Barber for this interview and keep it inglorious.